Beep. Hoot, the windfish sleeps long and dreamily in the egg pod. When you play the instruments of the sirens in front of the egg, he will awaken. This, my friend, is the only way for you to leave this island. Well, goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Luigi. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> Hello and welcome Hi. back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. We're at the big final egg. And yet again, Proton John, will you bless us? You will give me an egg. You will Thank give you. Me an egg. <laughs> anyway, all we have to do now is play the Song of Awakening. A little cheeky. And that's it. Game over. <laughs> no. First we get a bombing concert. Well, good job, we broke the egg. The time has come, the windfish awaits. Enter the egg. Hoot, hoot! Hoot, bye! Good luck! What when the windfish is egg? egg? There's moisture everywhere. You might think it's weird, but it's an egg. Yeah. So, and well, this is basically the Lost Woods and the Lost Hills from The Legend of Zelda 1. Basically, um, you, have to, you have to figure out what the real way is, because just walking in any direction is, brings you to these completely identical rooms. Which, which is a bit of a bummer, because I would have liked the remake to uh, change the Windfisher's egg into a proper dungeon, but oh well. So yeah, you may be wondering, but how do I know where to go? Well, there's an app for that. The telephone! Ring, ring. This is Ryra. You're lost in the egg? Hmm, well, that sounds weird. <laughs> Well, whatever, sir. I can help you on that one. Never been lost in an No, never. Don't want to be. How about the library? And hey, don't stop calling me because I didn't know one little answer. You weirdo. Click. <laughs> so, yeah. Remember <laughs> the app is bad. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I meant. Because uh, if you didn't already know that the library is basically your tutorial area, uh, that's telling you, hey, idiot, check out the library. Which we also know that there's something, the dark secrets and mysteries of Collins. Do you really want to read it? Yes. Round and round the passageway of the egg. Left, up, up, right, up, right, right, up. I think I technically could remember that. I'm gonna make a photo regardless. And whatever. Left, up, up, right, up, right, right, up. Sing it with me. Hmm. This book reeks of secrets. <laughs> yes, definitely secrets. Also, we never knocked that book down. We bomb. So we should probably show the the hidden power of colors. Do you want to read this? Oh book? yeah, this is the color dungeon. There's a new book, 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 book. Are you sure we didn't show that? I'm not sure right now. Did we show it? Future Aaron. In the library. 
This is library. <laughs> the hidden power of color. Do you want to read this book? <laughs> Peer pressure. Did we show it? Mm, mm, mm. All right. Um, now it's the time to head back to the egg. Excellent. Welcome to Egg. I'm your host Egg, and this is my co-host Egg. You will give me an egg. So it was up, left. No. Oh, you mean the up to that area? Yes. Yeah. So left, left, left. No, once left, up, two times. Oh, up, left, up, up. Right. All right. Up. Right, right. Right, right. Up. Nearly got it. And the thing is, um, there are. Ooh, uh, there are, a hole. Yeah. I believe there are three possible ways that uh, you have to go. And um, I think it's determined which way you have to go um, upon. Uh, upon first starting the game file, and oh. I also believe that the that the way that the proper ways to uh, the finish are different in the uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color versions uh, compared to the Switch version. Oh, interesting. I, be I believe the way I believe the um, the right way is a little bit shorter on Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Interesting. Anyway, let's jump back. Let's jump down down down. Back down is wrong. Yeah. We've had long enough nightmares. Dark Souls! <laughs> to take over this world, we made the windfish sleep endlessly. If the windfish doesn't wake up, this island will never disappear. We would have been the masters of this place. But you had to come here and disrupt our plans. <laughs> you can never defeat us. Let's rumble! And of course it is Dark Link. No. <laughs> no, it's Nightmare from the Kirby games. Uh <laughs> no. Close enough. Yeah, close enough. It's an orb with nine. <laughs> well. Alright, this requires a bunch of your uh, tools. Because uh, the nightmares have different forms. So and what you see is this fight is tool assisted. Oh, <laughs> Alright, this is the first one down. That's the uh, soul slime, I guess. Hey, it's Aganim. It's Aganim from A Link to the Past. And he likes to play Deadman's Wally still. So. Yeah. AKA uh, tennis. Yeah. I just love the term Deadman's Wally that much more. Yeah. I think um I think Phantom Art has actually current point that term. I think so too. Fuck you! He is rather rude, however. Yeah. Keep it going, Aganim. We have to keep the, this episode needs filler, so keep it. Go okay. The nightmare just got hit by the world's slowest moving projectile. Kinda deserved that one. All right, Aganim form is down. Next up, here we have no ah, worm. A mold worm. Ah. Uh. Suit. Yeah. And it has a face on the back of its tail. Oh, yeah. weird. Whoa. Things go oh, nice. It's implied that um, the nightmares forms are based on Link's actual nightmares. Because oh, here, oh, because Ganon. here is Ganon. And, and I assume that the presence of Mordorm as a, is as a actually nightmare. the nightmare of every player. <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, Mordom is usually seen as one of the worst bosses in uh, A Link to the Past. And that's why we, <laughs> in Dumpest Jack, mostly exclusively fought Mordom. Yeah, because he's also the easiest boss in, in this game. Yeah. Which is kind of funny if you think about it. Yeah. I think Mordom was way more annoying in uh, A Link to the Past. Oh yeah, because he could knock you down the platform and... Yeah. In, in Link's Awakening as well, but... Um, Link's Awakening is... No, uh, you just fall to a different pl plane, and I think there you took damage. No, 
In, no, in the link to the past, you also fell down to the lower floor and you and the boss fight was completely reset. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Ganon is a little bit more difficult here than he was in the Game Boy versions because he actually, he actually turns, uh, he can actually turn it, uh, your direction with the spear. Which I mean is a smart strategy and yeah. makes sense for a nightmare too. And what form is that supposed to be other than uh, the nightmare form? I think Lamola. I think that's uh, based on the Lamola worms that you can fight and link to the past uh -huh. and Link's Awakening. And now we have the final form of the Nightmares, Egg Death Eye. In the original versions on Game Boy and Game Boy Color, the Boomerang can actually one hit kill it. But I think they patched it out here. They nerfed the Boomerang in this game, so this isn't possible anymore. Which is a shame because it would have been hilarious. Yeah. But. Uh, the bow and arrow are still your preferred w preferred way of uh, dealing. Question: What would happen if we would use bomb arrows? I've ac I've actually never tried that before. I mean, you cannot jump that way, but they don't work. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't seem to work. Shame. Would have been cool if they were like a secret get it done quick method in this version. There we go. Also, maybe I should have. Um, Noted that, but on Game Boy Game Boy Color, uh, Death Eye uses the mini boss music, but in the Switch version, he gets a new theme. Nice. This island is going to disappear. Our world is going to disappear. Our world. Our world. Which will leave you with no world at all. Hey! <laughs> Neil, you have beaten all the nightmares. Also, I even just now remembered what's a stupid name. Climb the stairs before you. Welcome to Mario Kart. Are you ready for a race on Rainbow Road? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not? I got I got you this horse looking motorcycle. <laughs> I was the green fish all along, hoot! <laughs> Young lad, I mean, Neil, the hero, you have defeated the nightmares. You have proven your wisdom, courage and power. Do you have the Triforce by any chance? <laughs> it's part of the wind fish spirit. I am the guardian of his dream world. But one day, the nightmares entered the dream and began wreaking havoc. Then you, Neil, came to rescue the island. <laughs> I've always trusted in your courage. I knew that you could turn back the nightmares. Thank you, Nil. My work is done. The wingfish will wake soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. I am the wingfish. Long has been my slumber. In my dreams, an egg appeared. It was surrounded by an island with people, animals, an entire world. Dot, dot, dot. Yes, I'm ruined in this moment. But you are an asshole. <laughs> be, be, be happy I didn't give him the Black Knight's voice. That was also an option. Oh no. <laughs> but verily it be the nature of dreams to end. When I dozed awaken, the whole end will be gone. Only the memory of this dreamland will exist in the waking world. And as it is with dreams, no one will remember at all. Someday though may recall the island. That memory makes the dream world real. Dot dot dot, come near. Let us awaken together. Play the eight instruments. Play the song of awakening. Everyone, you're welcome for me ruining yet another ending to a game. You ass. <laughs>
and the Windfish's next adventure will be in Harold Warriors when you get summoned by Marion to kick everyone's fucking asses. Rude! <laughs> anyway, so that yeah. was Wing Wings Awakening. <laughs> Almost wrong game. <laughs> yes. This was fun. Yeah, it was fun tackling a game, an old game that I haven't played in years again. I have played um, the Game Boy Color version a fuck billion times. I've got... I think that was the last version I actively played was the Game Boy Color version. Yeah. And that's years ago by now. Yeah. Then I bought the original Game Boy version in German, English and Japanese online and played those to completion. Of and course you did. <laughs> yes. And then I bought the Switch version and played those to completion like six or seven times. I think this is the eighth time that I played through it. Something like that. Nice that we get such a special milestone. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, I really, really like this game a lot. And yes, there's still something about the original Game Boy versions that um, one might prefer more over the Switch version. Like maybe you like the pixel art more or just how it feels as a Game Boy game. But at least in my opinion, if you want to experience Link's Awakening, I think the Switch version is what you should go for. Yeah, especially with all the quality of life improvement, not jumping in and out of the inventory 15,000 times. I mean, we still did it a lot, but, but that's also because we had one button just always mostly designated for jumping, which also limited our usage for other abilities a little bit. But, but also that's, that's just on us, or yeah. me maybe, because it might depend on how you play. Yeah. But it still stands that not having to swap around to have usage of the sword or the shield or the constantly or the power bracelet yeah. or the Pegasus boots is such a huge improvement over the original games, which makes sense. We talked about this a lot during this that the buttons on the original Game Boy we are like uh, eight buttons in total. You not have counting the on and off. A switch on Game Boy, you just have the D-pad, A and B, and start and select. Yeah, that's so it. With the amount of buttons that you have compared to controllers nowadays, it makes sense. But yeah, definitely quality of life improvement with that one. So if you want to experience it for the first time, this is definitely a good game for that. And if you want to play the original games, you can always go back to them and play them for the first time, you will probably be a little bit more frustrated than if you would do it the other way around because you don't have the quality of life improvement with that, but it's just how things go. Some things get better. Hello there! You can only see Marin at the very end of the credits if you've never died in this game. If your save file has, a, has like a zero on death. I am... Shocked that we managed that, seeing how I played at times. <laughs> and how I played at times, because there were there were points where I was a bit of a derp. Don't save. save. Don't save. On a different spot. Yeah, okay, let's do that. I just want to make sure, because if anything is going wrong with the recording, I don't want to be stuck here like, well then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also then again you start like right at the at the beginning of the windfish attack so you can still do the fun the yeah but for the dialogues and everything true yeah. true yeah because um on the clear game file you don't get the uh, nightmare dialogue anymore yeah it just jumps straight to the battle so yeah a little behind the scenes action here for you at the end but whatever uh and thus it, this is a real fun game i enjoyed a lot and it also is a real big, huge uh, blast from the past, seeing it again. And the art style that they chose lends itself really well to the story of Link's Awakening. I and contrary to what the manga shows you with Link's Awakening, which is a little bit more gritty. But well, I think it's, it's the cool duality that the Zelda games have, because they can be dead, they can be cutesy and charming, and they can be really dark and gritty. The Zelda series has a lot of different art styles. Yeah. 
I've been playing uh, through Twilight Princess HD recently. Yeah, and, I've seen that. And uh, for one, graphically it aged like uh, it, it aged like garbage. But um, the interesting thing is with like graphics that are a little bit more realistic is, um, I think uh, they have a certain feeling to them. That's also the reason why I to this day really love the way that like Fallout. Like Fallout New Vegas more so than Fallout 3 looks to this day, even though it goes for this realistic kind of look and feel. To this day, it has something so distinct that always draws me back into it. Yeah, that's that's an that's an art style thing. Yeah, and even though Twilight Princess art style graphics didn't age very well, it still has has a particular art style. Yeah, like for instance, all the different characters that. They look very strange. Yeah. But Twilight, Twilight Princess, for its more realistic art style, has some really weird NPCs. Yeah. And I think that's because they go with, for a little bit more of a goth esque look sometimes, even uh, spe especially in the Dark World, Shadow World, what's it called? In, in, the, in the Twilight Realm. In the Twilight Realm. They go for, especially when you're in Hyrule Castle, it looks really goth. Like the harsh shadows, the lighting and everything that you have at that point specifically has something really goth-esque to it. Yeah. Which I think lends itself really well to the game. But we're gonna go over that when we tackle that game eventually. At some point. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this was Link's Awakening. Yeah. I hope you had fun. I, we sure did at least. Yes. And we'll see you in another call project. <laughs> Next project. Same channel, same time. I can't promise that. Depending on what slot gets free next, that's gonna make it take over that space. Bye. Bye. <laughs>